Welcome to Liberty Benton High School, where tonight in the Division III Region 6 District Semifinals, the Van Wert Cougars tackle the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dar Nevergal and our entire WLSN group. And Dar, we take a look at both of these teams, and you've got star power everywhere. Oh. Austin Parks, the Ohio State commit on one side. Aiden Pratt, the All-State quarterback on the other side. He's also the quarterback of this basketball team. They are loaded. Yeah, both sides are really loaded. And this is an all WBL district for for change, you know, and it's gonna be an exciting night tonight with these two guys. You know, you look at the you know, both contrasting a little bit, similar in a lot of different ways. So that you know, I expect a very good game tonight, a very a very defensive game tonight as well, you know, and you know, like you said, Danny, there's star power everywhere out there. Our pregame show and our keys to the game are brought to us by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call them home. So let's take a look at the keys for the game, Dar, starting first for the Van Wert Cougars. Well, Van Wert, you know, they know Austin Parts is going to score. There's no doubt about it. What they want to do is they want to make him work hard for every point he gets out there. You know, he wants to limit his teammates from scoring a lot, too. You know, you're going to let Parks do his thing, but you've got to stop the other guys on that team, you know, as well. You can't let them take control of the game on you. The other thing, too, is, you know, team defensive rebounding. You know, keep these guys limited on how many shots they're going to get, you know, and keep Parks out of the paint as much as you can. You know, the last thing is, that, you know, Van Wert wants to play fast, but they got to play under control, too. You can't have turnovers. You can't give uh, second opportunities for uh, St. Mary's to score on. You know, you want to spread the floor. You want to pull the guys out from underneath the basket to give you the opportunity to get those second shots. And for the St. Mary's Rough Riders, Dar, we talk a lot about Austin Parks. The 6'11 Ohio State commit is a really nice player, but they're loaded at a lot of positions, and they've got height everywhere. They're 6'7", 6'6", on the front line. Let's take a look at their keys for the victory. Well, one thing they want to do is they want to stop Dan Ward's uh, dribble penetration. They won't. They don't want them to get to the basket at all. They're going to have to stop that off. They're going to have to shut down the passing lanes. They're going to have to keep them from backdooring on them and getting to the basket quickly. You know, the other thing is that transition defense. You know, you got to get back. You can't let Van Wert run the ball up and down the court. You can't let them get those fast break points. You got to control them and play it back there. You got to get back on defense really quickly. The last thing is control the boards. You got Parks out there. You talked about the height on this St. Mary's team, my lands, you know. They've got all the height in the world, and they can control the boards if they want to tonight. You know, Bam Wirt, on the other hand, has to stop that from happening. But, you know, with the 6'6", six, 6'4", six, six, you, know, you know, all those big guys out there, 6'7", you know, it's kind of going to be hard to rebound against this St. Mary's Absolutely. team. So you're going to have to get out there and, and box out, and I mean aggressively box out if you want to get those rebounds. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the Van Wert Cougars. They come in at six and, 16 and 7 on the year. They are coached by Ben Loddick in his fourth year. They'll start number zero, Nate Phillips, a 6'3 senior guard at 6.1 a game. Number four, Luke Wessel is a 6'2 senior guard at 8.5 a game. Number five, Carson Smith is a 6'3 senior forward. He goes at 9.7 a game. Number 10, Garrett Gunter is a six-foot senior guard at 7.5 a game. And rounding out the starting five, number 15, Aiden Pratt is a 6'4 senior, averaging 20 points a game. For the St. Mary's Rough Riders, they come in at 18 and five. They are coached by Dan Hegemeyer in his fourth season. They'll go with number five, Cobain Owens, a six-foot junior guard at 5.7 a game. Number 11, Braden Sullivan is a six-foot senior guard at 8.7 a game. Jace Turner is a 6'7 junior forward at 12.8 a game. Number 24, Evan Engsman is a 6'6 junior forward at 11.6 a game. And we've talked about him a couple times tonight. Number 35, Austin Parks, the 6'11 senior at 22 points a game. So, partner, buckle up. I think we're yeah. going to have a good one. I think we are, too. And, you know, the thing about Austin Parks is we talk about him at 6'11. Not only is his presence underneath, but you watch him out there in pregame. He can hit that little short jumper really effectively, too. So he's a dangerous player inside and outside. So we got it all here tonight. We got St. Mary's. We got Van Wert. We got WSN. And we'll have tip-off right after these messages. We're back here at Liberty Benton High School getting ready for the 
Division Three District Semifinal between the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the Van Wert Cougars. And Dar, we take a look earlier this year. These guys played in, in, a, in a real grudge match on January 13th, a 62-60 St. Mary's win. Does that play into factor tonight, or what, what do you think? Uh, I don't. I don't think it'll play a whole lot in the heat tonight. You know, we're into the districts now. You know, that was a long time ago, really. You know, even though it was just January, that seems like a forever a long time ago. So I don't know if it'll play that much into it. You know, I don't know if one team will think, you know, hey, I got to get back, you know, revenge. The revenge type, type, type you know, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, when you get to this point in, in the season and you play as many games as you played throughout the season, you know, it comes down to just executing, doing what you do best. I mean, you don't throw a new crinkles into the game or anything else, like, you know, along that line. You just, you know, the coaches know, you know, here's what we've been working on all season long, guys. Now you just have to go out there and execute our game plan. and. You know, it, and it just comes down to basically shooting, you know, and two, you know, uh, you know, you got to hit points. You got to make shots, and, right, and, right. You know, that's the biggest thing. So I don't know if they really will play that much into it. You know, it was a close game, 62-60, so it shows just how equally matched these two teams can be. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. But, you know, I think a big thing is one of these teams would like to get off to a fast start. That's going to be a big thing. If you can get off that quick start, put the other team in a hole, you know, make them play catch-up ball on you. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Well, you look at St. Mary's, and with their size advantage, an obvious advantage, they want to probably turn this into a half-court game, and obviously Van Wert wants to get up and down the floor and make the bigs from St. Mary's have to move a little bit. Well, absolutely, and that's the biggest thing for Van Wert is if they can get up and down the court, they can limit that big game for St. Mary's because they won't have a time really to set into their offense and get that half-court offense going, and that's a big thing for them. You know, if St. Mary's can stop that from happening, you know, and get Van Wert to have to play a half-court game, you know, that's the advantage to St. Mary's because they got the height. You know, like if you look down that lineup, 6'6", 6'7", 6'11". That's big for a high school oh, team. That's, that's I made my a, land. That's big for a Division three yeah, college team. You know, <laughs> I'll take that any time. You know, and then you throw in a couple of good guards and Owens and Sullivan out there, you know, six-foot guys. They're, they're the little guys out there, <laughs> and that six-foot, you know, a lot of teams would take those guys too. You know, so well, they've won 14 in a row, so they've yep. they've turned. You know, and not I, I shouldn't say they've turned it around because they've had a great season. But boy, they've really kicked it in high gear. Oh, they have, and I saw them against Ottawa Atlanta. They've really come on strong since then. And you look at Van Word at 16 and 7. Got a little late start because of the football season, you know. But boy, they, they've really got it going. Got it going. Yeah, that always hurts teams that they can't get out there on the field to play. So. You know, get on the court and get that time in there. But, you know, hey, you went, you went far in football, so you can't argue with that. So we're going to step aside here for a few minutes for the national anthem. For the playing of our national anthem. on earlier tonight and you said it's an all WBL district uh, tournament here and I've said before in, in, in earlier broadcasts that I felt like district basketball is, is the best basketball there is because you know each other you've seen each other you're familiar with each other boy in this case all four teams yeah, all it's four unbelievable teams each other, yeah yeah, yeah it, it's been, I don't know when the last time it was had an all WBL district like this but uh, yeah you know it, it's tough for teams when they play the second time around because they know each other so well. And you take a look at how they got here. St. Mary's beat Fostoria and Van Wert up into the Elida. So, again, there's Van Wert-Elida, the WBL matchup. And, uh, yeah, you know, you 
you're not you're not going to throw any new things out there. You're not going to you know show something they haven't seen. They've scouted you enough. They've played you enough, and they're familiar with. A lot of these kids know each other. They're, they're, it's, a lot of them are related and things like that. Yeah, you're not going to throw any. That's why I said you're just going to have to go out there and execute your game. I mean, you know, do the things that you've been practicing all season long. You know, the things you perfected. You know, you might throw in a couple little wrinkles, but really nothing serious. You know, you know, just go out there and play your game. Move the ball around. Get the best shot you can get, and I expect this to be, you know, you're looking at Team Van Wert averaging 59 points a game, St. Mary's averaging 60 points a game, you know, Van Wert giving up, you know, 49 points a game, you know, St. Mary's 45 points a game, so you're going to see a game similar to that, you know, to that 62-60 game earlier on. Let me ask you this, let me put you on the spot a little bit, put your coach's hat on. Of the two leading scorers, Austin Parks for St. Mary's, Aiden Pratt for Van Wert, who has to have the bigger night tonight for his team to advance? Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> I told you I was putting that, on the spot. <laughs> I think it's Aiden Park or Aiden Pratt right, myself. Okay. I think Aiden hit, really has to have a good game. He's, you know, he's their leading scorer, but he's also, you know, he was a, like you said, he was yeah. the quarterback on the football team. He's the quarterback out here too. He has to control this game, and that means can we get out there on transition? That's a great he's point. The guy's got to do that. You know, Austin Parks, he's going to get his points. We know he's going to get his points. They and know that was one. Of, that was one of your keys. Yeah. Absolutely. They know he's going to get his points. You know, the question is, don't let other guys out there around him get points. You know, control them as much as you can. So it's going to come down to Brad as far as controlling this game from his position out there. You know, he's going to get his points too, but really it's not as important for his points as it is on how he, how he, you know, runs this offense for Van Wert and, you know, controls that kind of offense. And obviously for St. Mary's, Van Wert's going to want to pull Parks away from the basket. Easier said than done, but do they attack the basket? Do they try to run the perimeter? What's the game plan for them? Well, one of the things you got to be careful about if you want to pull Parks away from there is he's not the only guy under there. <laughs> Angstman's underneath there. You know, Turner's underneath there. You know, you pull Parks away from there. And I, like I said, in pregame, you can watch Parks, and he can shoot that little short jumper around the foul line, that kind of stuff. He's very smooth at it. He gets very good elevation and shoots it off the top of that elevation. So, really, if you pull him away from the basket, are you really doing that much damage when you've got Turner and Angstman following him up behind there? That's the bad thing, too, when it comes on defense, too, because you try to go in there and, and you know, you want to dribble penetration into the basket, you're running into three trees right there that aren't going to let you do it, and they're going to back you and it bangs each other up. So, you know, I, I don't know as much as pulling him away from the basket as boxing him out away from him as much as you can, you know. If that's two or three feet away from the basket, that's going to help you. You know, we, we talked earlier on the WSN Selection Show about key players in the tournament trail, and I said that when you have a guy like Austin Barnes, regardless of what you have around him, you can go to the post and you can get a bucket. And you need that as you get deeper into the run. You need a guy that when you get the ball there, you know your chances of scoring are really good, and they have that with Austin Parks. Well, yeah, and absolutely. And also with free throw shooting, you know, you got a kid, you know, that's six foot 11, shooting 70% from the free throw line. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. You know, Shaq would like those numbers. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know, so it, the idea is you get late into the game, too. There's a guy you can go to, take the ball to the basket, and he's going to draw a foul and get himself right there. Let's take a look at our officials for tonight. Tate Mayberry, Terry Bogard, and Tyson Schnitke. They'll be calling the fouls and blowing the whistle here for the big game. We are just about underway as Aiden Pratt and Austin Parks will tip it off here in the Division Three semifinals from Liberty Benton High School. Danny Holbrook, Dar Nevergall bringing you all the action here on WOSN and Van Wert will control the tip. This is Carson Smith. He'll swing it over to Garrett Gunter. Gunter guarded out top by Owens from St. Mary's. They'll swing it around to Nate Phillips. Nate Phillips was a wide receiver on the football team, and he is a dandy athlete. They'll swing it over to Pratt. Well, you see already Van Ward just kind of moving the ball around on the out exterior, trying to fill St. Mary's out a little bit, see what kind of opening they can get underneath. St. Mary's in a little matchup 2-3 zone here. There's a dribble drive to the post. They'll go in. They'll go back outside. Three ball from the left corner up, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down. And snagged by Phillips. He'll swing it back out. And Pratt will regroup the troops here. Still 0-0, 7 18 to go. Yeah, that's one thing when you shoot a three out there, those long rebounds, and you really got to get those long rebounds. This is Gunter with the ball out top. 
Thought about going inside. He'll go back to Phillips. He'll swing it around to Luke Wessel. There's a three ball from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Austin Parks snags it. And we talked about that earlier. You're going to see Parks get a lot of rebounds unless they check him on the box there. Yeah, you've got to put somebody on him to clock him out of there. This is Parks with the ball out top. He'll swing it around to Owens. Owens swings it back to Sullivan. They'll go, alley -oop. are you kidding me? Good night and good morning. Austin Parks shows you why he's one of the top players in the state of Ohio. And the Riders lead 2-0 on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. And I'll tell you what, Danny, you can see that developing right away because you saw Parks, you know, on the outside just kind of sneak around the guys. They get underneath that basket. And you talk about getting your getting your fans on their feet. Something like that yeah, gets everybody right excited. <laughs> Our but scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lottox Jewelry, your family owned and operated jewelry for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lottox.com. So there's a steal by the Riders. They'll bring it down. They're up 2-0. They'll go back to the three-point line. Thought about taking the shot. They'll swing it back around. This is Cobain Owens. He'll swing it back over to Jace Turner. They'll go into Parks. Parks, a little turnaround off the mark. Just short-armed it just a little bit. Nice defensive play there by the Cougars. They'll go into Pratt. Pratt takes it up. Shot was blocked. He gets no rebound. He scores. Aiden Pratt knocks in the little two-foot jumper, and he makes it 2-2 on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. Yeah, you saw Parks underneath there. You know, Pratt just battling underneath there just to get that rebound and put back in. You know, we saw Parks on that game play earlier. You know, just missing that short little jumper inside move. Evan Angsman comes up towards the towards the uh, book there and uh, just drops the drops the ball there. Here's the replay. So Van Wert will take the ball back. Go ahead, Dar. Yeah, that's one turnover now for each of the teams. We didn't talk a lot about turnovers, but turnovers are going to be huge in this game when you've got two evenly matched squads like we've got tonight. Well, Van Wert only averages about nine turnovers a game. Same marriage average about 11. There's Pratt from the three line off the mark. Rebound comes down. Luke Wessel with the rebound. They'll go back out in the game now. Number three, A.J. Profit. And there's another three ball. It makes it 5-2 on the Lottox Jewelry scoreboard. Our three-point sponsor is Lee Kinzel on Urban Road and Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. Lee Kinzel is our three-point sponsor. Now we got a foul up top, and that is not going to make Coach Lonick happy fouling that far away from the basket. Yeah, that's a foul you don't want to get back. You don't want to give those up. Well, yeah, Carson it, Smith, you know, just that was his 95th three pointer of the season, and he's hit 26% of those. Well, they're not going to be shy, that's for sure, Dar, because you saw four of them right there, back to back to back. And yeah, they're going to fire yeah. it up there. They're 32%. Three point shooting team. There you see Parks come out and set a screen. He'll go back down to the block. He'll go back down to Parks down low. He swings it back out around the perimeter. This is Owens. Owens go back into Angsman. Angsman with a turnaround. Jace Turner with the turnaround there. And he makes it 5 4 on the Loudox Jewelry scoreboard. Well, I'll tell you what, Danny, that's the other thing that Parks does is. You're so busy guarding him with two guys, that's going to leave somebody open. Yeah, he really sees the floor well, does he not, Dar? Here comes Van Wert. They'll try to go to the middle. Ball gets thrown away. It's picked up by Jace Turner. They'll get it out to Owens. Owens will bring it down the left side of the floor. 5-4 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Here come the Riders. This is Turner up top. Turner, the 6'7 junior forward. A lot of size in that rider lineup tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of juniors in that lineup. I was going to say, a lot of juniors. You're absolutely right. There's a three ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Tobey Owens knocks in another Lee Kinzel three-point shot, and he makes it 7-5 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. There's a 39% three-point shooter, and you can tell on that one there. So he knocks that one in. Riders up 7-5. Danny Hobart Darn never gone from Liberty Benton High School. Division three district semifinal. It's an all WBL final or semifinal, excuse me, and the final. There's a oh, three pointer. Very raining three pointers. AJ Prophet, the six foot senior guard, knocks in the three and he makes it eight seven on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. I said, you know, if Van Ward, a 32% three, uh, three point shooting team, St. Mary's a 44%. There you saw Austin Parks with a little turnaround jumper and it rolls off the iron. Thought about going in, but it decides to roll out. Here comes the Cougars. Pratt gets it down the corner. They'll swing it back up top. There you see Luke Wessel fall down, but Pratt will corral the ball. 
Ball goes off the foot, and that is going to go, looks like they're going to save Van Wert. I thought it went off the Van Wert player there, but apparently it did not. Now the officials are going to get together. I think they may change that one. They're going to stay the same there. Yep, they're going to leave it. Coach Lowdy holding the ball there for the officials, making sure the Cougars yeah, get it. Yeah. I'm not giving you this That's ball until right. you call it my way. <laughs> Coach Hagemeyer wanted the ball, and <laughs> Coach Lowdy said, no, nah, I'm going to keep it. So here come the Cougars. Nate Phillips, he'll go to the corner. They'll go down to Luke Wessel. They'll go back up top to Phillips. Phillips goes between the legs. This is Aiden Pratt as he dribble drives around the perimeter. Back up top to Caden Schaefer. Well, St. Mary's with this 2-3 zone is just practically – Daring Van Wert to shoot three-pointer. Wessel tries to go in, but a great job by the St. Mary's defense. And you're right, they're going to stay in that zone as long as they've got a lead here. Here's Pratt. He'll go up top of the key. Swing it back around to Phillips. And Owens just keeps extending out. I'll tell you, yeah, as I was say, it's not just a 2-3 a zone, but the they're guys not, are yeah. getting out there on them and making sure they don't get clean three-point shots. You know, we talked to a lot of coaches this week about Squads running each other off the three-point line. There's a nice turnaround by Aiden Pratt. That goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Braden Sullivan. He'll get it over to Owens, and the Riders will take over. This is Anxman. Anxman three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Turner. Turner fighting for the ball, and they're going to get a foul. And that foul is going to go against. Let's see who they're going to call that against. Here's the rebound right here. You see Turner go up high and get the ball, and it just goes off of him. I think they got that. No, they got that on number 10, Garrett Gunter. That's his first. So a break for the Riders there as Turner dropped the ball. And uh, they'll go back into Parks right away. Nice little turnaround, Austin Parks. There you see the size advantage. Austin Parks knocks in the jumper, makes it 9-8 on the Loudex Jewelry scoreboard. You're not going to stop that. There's no way. Once he gets deep down in yeah, there. Yeah, once he's yeah. in there, his elevation, he's just practically throwing the ball down. Cougars take their time here, down 9-8. 104 to go here in the first quarter from Liberty Benton High School. The Division Three District Semifinal. Nice crowd on tap tonight here. Thought about taking a three ball, he'll dribble drive foul line. Shot goes up and it's good. Garrett Gunter, he who committed the foul on the other end says, I'm gonna redeem myself coach. And he knocks in the jumper and he gives the Cougars the 10-9 lead on the Loudoc Story scoreboard. That was a nice little jumper too because he was contested on that one. Well, I think against that zone, you're going to have to penetrate. You're going to have to get the ball to the middle, and that's a nice job, and I'm thinking Coach Lodick's going to tell those kids that. So they'll swing the ball around. Nice job there by Anxman. They get it over to Turner. Turner with a little bit of a six-foot jumper, and he misses that one off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Cougars. This is Carson Smith. He'll go over to Garrett Gunter, and the Cougars are going to hold for one shot with 15 seconds to go. And the opportunity to win this first quarter. Well, he... A up and coming, running and shooting, and whatever else you want to call this first quarter has been exciting. We're at five. Here goes Phillips. Goes inside. They'll swing it around, trying to get the shot up, and they don't get the shot up. After one quarter, the Liberty Bend High School, the Vandermark Cougars lead 10-9. We'll be back with second quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Liberty Bend High School. We're after one quarter of play. The Van Wert Cougars lead 10-9 on the Loudoc Strolley scoreboard. And Dar, I think we figured out the game plan for both schools. St. Mary's get it in the middle, the, right here to Austin yep. Parks, just like that. And Austin Parks scores again. And for the Cougars, they want to bombs away, brother. Well, they have to. At this 2-3 zone that uh, St. Mary's is playing, now they've switched it up a little bit. They've put Parks out a little bit farther out. But, you know, they have to shoot it from the outside, and they have to be very effective with that. Here come the Cougars. They're down 10-11 on the scoreboard. They'll go around that zone. They'll skip pass, and the ball gets away. And Evan Anxman tries to corral it. It goes off of him, and it's going to go back to Van Wert. So a break for the Cougars there under the basket. It's, it's going to be tough for Van Wert to get in there. You know, it, like I said, the first game was 62-60, so I'd like to see what kind of game plan they had in the first game. I didn't get a chance to see that game. But, you know, 
You look at this one right here, and it's obvious what they need to do. There's another three ball for the Cougars, and there you see A.J. Prophet, the six-foot senior guard, knocks in another Lee Kinzel three-pointer, and he makes it 13-11 on the Loudix scoreboard. Well, he's a 41% three-point shooter out there. You cannot leave him open. There you saw a nice give and go from Evan Angsman to Austin Parks, and Angsman just misses the layup there, and it goes back to the Cougars, so a break for the Cougars. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. This game's just zipping along, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it feels like we just started. Here we are midway through the second quarter. But I like it. I like it a lot. I like it too. <laughs> Here's Pratt with the ball out top. And that's one thing the Cougars have got to get going. They've got to get Pratt going into the offense. But with this zone, it's really hard if you can't get the ball. Well, it's hard because you got Parks behind you, sure. and they're always fronting him with somebody else. You know, whether that's in the number five out there, Cobain Owens, or, or somebody. There's a nice dribble drive to get the ball down low, and there you saw Luke Wessel takes it up against Parks. And watch this replay here. A great play of penetrating into the middle, and you see Wessel go sneak back side of Parks, and there you see Angsman with the foul. Yeah, that's a smart move right there, and that's what they're going to have to continue to do. They may not get the basket, but they'll get to the free throw line. So Wessel will go to our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lime on Wampak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So 6.24 to go. 14 to 11 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Wessel, a 63% free throw shooter. Honorable mention, all WBL. There's an all lot of all WBL guys out oh, yeah, there on absolutely. that floor. I'll tell you. In the game now for Van Werders, number 23, Connor Campbell, the 6'1 junior guard. He'll come in, give him a breather. I like how they bring Parks up to break this press. I really do. And there's a big time screen oh, by Parks. My. Austin Phillips went down, or Nate Phillips, excuse me, went down hard. And you saw Nate Phillips get up from that hit and kind of shake his head. It was like uh, and it, and it wasn't a dirty play. No. No, no, no. What was the license plate of that truck <laughs> I just ran into? <laughs> right. <laughs> My goodness. So Austin Parks will trigger the ball underneath their basket. Goes right to Angsman. Angsman goes straight up. Oh, and it's blocked Whoa. by Aiden Pratt. A big time block. They'll go back to Parks on the low post. Parks turns around, a little up and under. He'll go back out to Hanksman from the three-point line. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to number five, Carson Smith. He'll lead the break down the middle of the floor. That was just good defense, Danny. Really good defense. Here come the Cougars looking to add. This is Pratt up top. You know Pratt wanted to take out. Yeah, he <laughs> he thought about it for a second. This is Wessel with the ball. They'll go underneath the basket, and a nice backdoor cut by Garrett Gunter. Rebound comes down. That's number 23. Connor Campbell just comes in the game, and he gives the Cougars the 17-11 lead on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. That's six players now for Van Wert that's on the scoreboard. You know, I'll tell you, there are advantages to zone, but one of the disadvantages to a zone is rebounding on, on the defensive end. They'll go back to Parks down low. Parks is just being hounded, and he's going to get fouled. And that, here you see, watch Austin Parks, and we talked about it earlier, as he gets low down in the post, right there. That's just too far to let him catch yeah, the ball down low. Get in like that. They had him controlled there for a minute, but he was able to slip out of that. They say that's Colin Haggerty on the foul. They've got 24 on the board, but we don't have, Haggerty's not in the game. I'm not really sure who they we got a little trouble with the scoreboard because we got no number, we got no points on the one side. So I'm almost positive that foul was not on number 24, Colin Haggerty, as he is not on the floor. So Parks with the another Lee's famous recipe free throw. And he makes it 17-13 on the Loudix scoreboard. So here come the Cougars as they try to add that lead. They'll go Pratt up top. Pratt swings it around. This is Carson Smith, a little dribble drive to the foul line. Swing it back out. Wessel from the three-point line, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Austin Parks, and he'll outlet the ball to zero. Jaden Lotz, the 6'1 senior guard, and they'll get it over to Owens. Well, one thing right now, Van Wert's really controlling the boards really well. They've got seven unofficial rebounds to just three for St. Mary's. Lots with the ball. And every time Parks gets the ball, you're going to watch Aiden Pratt just kind of collapses back, or Wessel will come from the other side. 
And there's a great job for Austin Parks to get the foul. Here you see that. So when Parks will get the ball from a wing pass, watch the backside rotate, and they're coming over. And here comes Wessel, and he knows which way he's going. And Parks is a smart player. Oh, he's seen right there. You know, he knows if I lean around this way, I'm probably going to draw the foul, even if I don't get a clean look at the basket. Well, Austin Parks misses that free throw. <laughs> Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delta. So all these for all your catering needs. Home style happens here. That's his 135th free throw of the season. <laughs> when you get the ball that much and you're that wow. big, you're, you're going to get fouled a lot. So second one on the way, and that goes off the mark. Rebound comes down, and that looked like it went out of bounds. <laughs> Dar, I mean, you heard the, the groans from the crowd. It looked like it hit the side. <laughs> Here come the Cougars. There's Garrett Gunner. He'll kick it back out. Three ball from the right stop. It's off the mark. Oh, nice Aiden job. Pratt, Johnny on the spot. Aiden Pratt knocks it in, and he gives the Cougars the 19-13 lead. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout on the move. You're watching District Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So we got action everywhere, Dar. I'm getting tired just calling this one. They're up and down and shooting and rebounding and everything we asked for in a WBL district semifinal. So I'll tell you what, Danny, watching uh, Pratt out there, he plays with a certain confidence. He does, I mean, yeah, you absolutely. Know, just, I, I guess being a quarterback, you, you have that confidence anyhow, but you know you can see it, a little determination in his eyes too. Watch this matchup down low between Austin Parks and Carson Smith. Carson Smith, there's a three ball from the top, and it's good. Braden Sullivan, the six foot left handed sharpshooter, knocks in the triple. Another Lee Kinsel triple, and it makes it 19 16 on the Loudox Jewelry scoreboard. And again, we talked about that. That's one thing Parks really does. He draws three guys to him. Leaves the guy open on the outside for an open three. And this is interesting. Watch what Van Wert's doing. They're going to bring the ball out. They're going to force St. Mary's to come out and play him. And look at that, a dribble drive. And that's exactly what they wanted. <laughs> Garrett Gunter beats his man off the dribble. He scores the deuce, and he makes it 21-16. Kind of long to sleep there. Oh, my goodness. Here comes St. Mary's. They'll go back inside the Turner. Turner turns it over. And another steal by the Cougars. Here come the Cougars up the floor. And a nice give and go. Nate Phillips from the left side. And he makes it 21 16 on the Loudoux scoreboard. And that's what you can't allow happen with Van Wert. They will get out there fast. They'll get out there in transition. And you got to stop that. And there you saw Austin Parks with the big time travel right there. And you take a look at it right here on instant replay. Watch the Cougars get out and go. And what a pass to Nate Phillips as he's running down the left side. I'm telling you, Dar, this Cougar team is athletic. They are certainly <laughs> are, and that pass there shows it. I mean, that was right on the money. And so here you go. The Cougars have spread him out again. There you see Garrett Gunter challenging his man. He's guarded out top by Braden Sullivan. Gets a screen from Pratt. He'll go to the right side. Dribble drive up the right side. Throws it high off the glass. Rebound comes down the park. They get it outside to Sullivan. Sullivan will go up the left side. He'll get it to Parks. Parks at the top of the key. Van Wert in there, man-to-man -man defense. They'll go over to Jace Turner. Jace Turner guarded by Aiden Pratt. And you want to talk about a matchup of some athletes, Jace Turner and yeah. <laughs> Aiden Pratt. I'll tell you what, right now, Van Wert's doing exactly what they wanted to do. They knew that Parks was score, but they're going to make him work for every point he gets out there, and he's had to do that. So we've got confusion on the floor. We've got a timeout. We'll take a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. <laughs> Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. So, partner, look, Van Wert's pulled him out of that zone, and you got to believe Coach Hagenmeyer's told his kids, we need to continue to protect the rim because we can't allow the dribble drive. No, we can't, and we can't be lulled to sleep like we were on that one play alone. You know, even if we have to come out there and guard him outside on those three-point shots, you cannot stand 
for them to drive right in past you either. They'll go back into Parks and a nice pass. And there you saw Austin Park finds the open man, adjusts in the post, gets the ball, and scores to make it 23-18. And there's a block on the play by the Cougars. And you saw Luke Wessel try to go up on the left side. And that ball gets swatted away. Here come the Riders. They'll go back into Parks. Gets low position. Shot goes up and he scores. Austin Parks, the big man. He'll go to the line for an old-fashioned three. Let's take a look and watch exactly what he does. He gets great position, catches the ball down low, goes up strong against three players and just knocks it Oh, yeah, you're not going to stop that. Too strong underneath the basket. And right now, you know, St. Mary's is doing what they have to do. Go to your big guy. I mean, let him let him go into the basket. That's exactly yeah. right. You let your big guys play, and you let and you get the ball to your best players, and that's what St. Mary's is doing right now. He's so carried you all season long. Yes, that's He's right. going to carry you in this one too. Yep. And he knocks that one in. Austin Parks with the old-fashioned three. He's got 13 on the night to lead all scores. 23-21. On the Loudox Jewelry scoreboard. So, partner, this is everything we wanted as we got a dandy here in the first game of the district semifinals. And there you see a little bit of a push off. You saw number five, Carson Smith, gets the three away, but the St. Mary's bench erupted. And let's take a look at this. Watch his. Little bit late there was as, as no call was made, but the three ball goes up. So, Aiden Pratt. Go to the line. Coach Hagenmeyer from St. Mary's is visibly upset because he is way out on the floor. You see Coach Lodic <laughs> moving <laughs> down there too. <laughs> so they're discussing some things at the at the scorers table. We've had a little trouble with the clock tonight on the scoring side, and so the officials looking up at the clock. We got a great vantage partner. We're we're right up on top. We yeah, can see everything. Yeah, we're in the crow's nest. <laughs> but but that's there. okay. No we can it. see everything absolutely. So it looks like they're going to discuss some things and take a timeout. That'll give us a chance to step aside. We come back. 152 left until halftime. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Liberty Bend High School with 152 to go. 23-21 contest. The Cougars continue to lead. Aiden Pratt will go Aiden to the Pratt free throw line. 22. He will go to our Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. First one on the way. Oh, that, that was in, partner. It rolled I'll out. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I don't know how you get any better than that. <laughs> That, that's the kind you really hate to see. You know? <laughs> right. like, man, that was in there. That was a good shot. Come what you, on. What do you say about that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to think about this one. Now. The second one is up on the way. And it's good. So St. Mary's will bring it down and a little pressure here by the Cougars. 150 to go. And there Nate Phillips almost oh, steals hey. the ball. And there you saw the quickness of Nate Phillips. And great anticipation, too. You saw him right there. He could see Park's eyes. He knew where that ball was going to go, and he was going to be there right, you know, to knock it away. So St. Mary's will take it out on the corner over in front of their student section. They're trying to get the ball in over Austin Parks, and I love the way they use yeah. Parks on that. And Parks fires it down the floor, finds Evan Angsman. He's got Jace Turner posted up, but he misses him on the throw. And they'll go back up top to Owens where he'll reset the offense. Owens is guarded all over the place by Phillips. Yes, yeah, pretty much once they break that press, they don't go towards the basket. They wait for Parks to get back down there and get underneath. And there's Owens with the ball. Thought about taking the three. They'll go from the left side. This is Parks at the high post. Little turnaround. Thought about taking it. He'll swing it over. They'll go back to Angsman. Angsman dribble drive, takes it inside. And they're going to say a blocking foul. And here's the replay. Let's take a look and see if Wessel gets his feet set. Hanksman just from the top of the key brings it down. I kind of moved a little bit there, little bit. so you could have went bit. both ways on that. I'm, I'm glad I'm calling it up here, yeah. not down there. <laughs> I think the call, call was whether or not it was going to be on the floor sure. or in the act of shooting, too. So here's Evan Hanksman at the line, trying to inch the riders another point closer. And that goes off the mark. We'll get another try here with 115 to go. Entering the game now for the Cougars, number three, A.J. Prophet, the six-foot senior guard. 
Coach Laudick is imploring his kids to box out the big fella. And that shot goes in. Makes it 24-22 on the Laudick's Jewelry scoreboard. Believe it or not, that's Anksman's first point. There's a dribble drive. Profit with the ball up top. Pratt thought about taking it. He's going to dribble drive against Parks. He'll go up the left side. Takes it up and it's blocked. Austin Parks. And that's exactly what Austin Parks wants you to do is bring it inside towards him. And he stands there with his hands straight up and a nice defensive play by Parks. And good anticipation by him as well. I mean, he knew exactly which way Pratt was going to go. There you saw the replay. He did a great job. And I think Pratt thought maybe if he could get him off his feet. But unfortunately, even if you get him off his feet, he's still 6'11". Yeah. <laughs> So he can go straight up from <laughs> right. there. Nate Phillips with the ball up top. And so bring it out towards the volleyball line. He's going to get it to Garrett Gunter, but Gunter is just hounded by Owens. So Pratt will bring it up top. 47 seconds to go. And it looks like the Cougars are going to take that last shot of the half up 24-22. Yeah, worst case scenario for the Cougars is they're going to go into halftime with the lead. So. Well, yeah, and, and look, if I'm Coach Lodick, I'm telling my kids, we are taking the last shot. We're not going to give them a chance to get the last shot, So, which means you're going to have to take it five to four to three seconds. And St. Mary's barely is content to let them do that. They're Absolutely. not going to come well, out there and challenge yeah. them. Well, Parks is going to come out and make Pratt move the ball around a little bit. We're down to 15 seconds. They'll get it up to Garrett Gunter. Gunter will swing it over to Profit. Back to Gunter. We're down to nine. They'll go inside to Pratt. Pratt with the ball, back to Gunner. Little dribble drive, foul line. Shot goes up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Turner. Owens will throw it halfway. Oh. Almost goes in. So after one half of play from Liberty Benton, the Division Three District Semifinals, the Van Wert Cougars lead the St. Mary's Rough Riders 24-22. We'll have second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Liberty Bend High School. Halftime adjustments are brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. So Dar, the Cougs up 24-22. You saw them spread them out a little bit, take them out of that zone, and got to the rim pretty easy. Yeah, they did, and I mean, Van Wert right now is doing exactly what they wanted to do. You know, when they knew Parks was gonna get his points, he got 13 points in the first half. But you look at the other guys around him, you know, Turner only has two points, Anksman only has one point. So they're not letting anybody else beat them. So they know their Parks is gonna get on the inside. He's gonna get those points that they get. But if they can keep Turner and Anksman off the, off the board, you know, off the points in totals, you know, they, can, they got this game, in, you know, under wraps. But, you know, right now, I think for the second half, you know, St. Mary's is just gonna have to continue doing what they're doing. They gotta get the ball on the inside. They gotta get to the foul line as much as they can. But they got to figure out a way to stop these guys from shooting from the outside and drawing them out or open up that middle, like you said, Danny, because that's what's happening right now is they're pulling St. Mary's out and they're going right to the basket then. And you look at this Van Ward team, they've got seven players in the scoring column in that first half. And for Van Ward, you know, stopping Parks in the middle, the first start, the first part of that is getting ball stoppage on the perimeter. You've got to guard the ball and keep it from going in. Yeah, that's going to be tough to do. I mean, you know, they're throwing that ball on the inside to Parks, and they're six foot eleven. He's going to pull that ball down. So we'll be back right after these messages for tip off of the second half, right here on WSN. Welcome back to Liberty Bend High School. Danny, we're darn ever going dark. You're supposed to make fun of me. I said tip off of the second half. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, there's no tip off of the second half. So Van Wert will take it out in front of the St. Mary's face. There it player. is. There, I just saw we'll, a tip off. Yeah, we'll call that a tip off. <laughs> so 24-22 on the Loudex Jewelry scoreboard. Van Wert, look at this, Dar. They're going to bring the ball out just like they concluded the first half and try to drag St. Mary's out of that big zone. I don't think St. Mary's, the back line, is going to move much. I think they're going to stay right there. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't, you know, they're not going to move a whole lot. But, you know, the key is, is you can't let them out on the outside either because Van Wert's been hitting from three-point shots. They get, they're three for, ten, for 10 in the first half from three-point land. But the point of it is, is they're getting some open looks out there. Well, so. and you look at that front line with Parks at 6'11", Angsman at 6'6", 
Turner is 6'7". There, there's no reason to move. You saw uh, Garrett Gunner, a little penetration there, and he got to the rim, but he was met by three big-time rider players right there. Well, and the other smart thing that Van Wert's doing is that when they do have to foul Parks, they're not the same guy fouling Parks. There so you they're see, spreading yeah. out their fouls, too. There you see Phillips get behind oh. him. Gets the ball to Gunter. Yeah. Nice job by Garrett Gunter <laughs> as he gets in a good position to receive the ball, scores the bucket, and it makes it 26-22 on the Lodge Story scoreboard. Good job by Phillips just to find him. I don't know. They'll go back down to Parks. Parks guarded by two Cougars. Three ball on the way. It's off the marks. Brady Sullivan, the left-handed shooter, misses that one. Here come the Cougars up 26-22. And really, when you're the Cougars and you start taking 35, 40, 45 seconds off of the clock, it really puts a little pressure on St. Mary's offensive sets. Well, yeah, because St. Mary's thinks, well, I got to go down there and score. Sure. You know, and, and we're only in, you know, just starting the third quarter. You got plenty of time out there to set up your offense and stuff. But, you know, it does put a little bit of, you know, push yeah, if absolutely. you're on the offensive side. So the Cougars taking their time. This is Aiden Pratt. He'll stand at the volleyball line. He's guarded by Austin Parks. Parks coming out a little bit farther now. There's a nice dribble drive by Gunter as he takes it in. A lot of contact, no foul called. Rebound comes down. Owens will bring it down the right side. He'll get it over to Sullivan. Sullivan gets it into Parks. Parks way down low. Little turnaround, nice muscle move. Austin Parks, and how do you stop that? You can't stop that. And it's 26-24 on the Loudoux scoreboard. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. You know. Parks has 15 on the night. I know that because he's the only one on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he is. <laughs> so Maybe they figure that's, that's I, I don't right know. They, they've got no other names up there except his or his numbers, so that's okay. Here come the Cougars. Nice oh, dribble drive out, by Phillips as he goes high. Oh, boy. And my goodness. There you saw Nate Phillips takes it to the rim. Watch this, and he goes down really hard. Watch the cut to the basket. Austin Parks tries to get back in position. He makes the shot, and he fouls him. And Phillips is still down, and he is in some pain. Let's hope that young man is okay. The trainers are taking a look at him. Watch this here. Wow. He had a wide open look to the basket too, and Parks just cut over. And there you see the athleticism of Phillips who goes as high as he can to put the ball off the glass. So Phillips continues to struggle on the floor. And they're, they're gonna let's see if that young man's gonna be, oh yeah, he's gonna come off the floor. He's finally sitting up, which is a great sign to see. And hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him when he hit the ground. And that's exactly what it looked like, but you can hear it all the way up here in the crow's nest. You hear the thump. And there we go. Nate Phillips is on his feet, and he gets a nice round of applause from both crowds. And they'll bring another shooter in to shoot for him, I'm assuming. So it looks like they'll bring in A.J. Prophet. A.J. Prophet will go to the line. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And A.J.'s just been to the line. You know, he's one for two this season at the free throw line. <laughs> well, there's no bigger time to do it than right now in the district semifinal. He misses that shot. Rebound comes down to Jace Turner. Turner will get it out to Sullivan. Sullivan pressured up top by Wessel. They'll get across the timeline. They'll go Austin Parks at the high post. Parks is guarded out top by Carson Smith. Swinging around. Sullivan gets it over to Owens. Back to Turner. Turner gets it inside to Parks. Parks a little turn around to the right side. Austin Parks. And when he catches the ball that low, you're at his mercy. And it makes it 28-26 on the Alex yeah, scoreboard. You're either going to you know, foul him or let him have the basket because you, there's nothing else you can do. So nobody's separating themselves so far. We're in the third quarter, 4.45 to go. A two-point game in an all-WBL district semifinal here. They played a two-point game earlier in the year. St. Mary's won that one, 62-60. Nice there you see a nice dribble drive by Garrett Gunter as he challenges Austin Parks on the baseline, and he wins that challenge, and the Cougars lead 30-26 on the Loudoux scoreboard. That's eight points now for uh, Garrett. Garrett Gunter showing you his athleticism. They'll go back to Parks, Parks double team, and he finds a cutting Jace Turner, and a nice job by Jace Turner to give the ball up and then go baseline, and he scores to make it 30-28. 
And if Turner and Angsman start getting into the scoring column, Van Wert's going to be in trouble. So far, they've done a nice job of keeping him out of there. There you saw Austin Parks and, and a great job of him finding his open teammate. And there's a nice cut by Wessel. Wessel reverse left-handed layup. Luke Wessel with a nice play there. And he makes it 32-28 on the Loudoc scoreboard. Van Voorts find that little seam underneath right. the basket. I mean, <laughs> there ain't much room down there and they're finding it. There you go, Austin Parks, a little turnaround off the marks. Parks just short on that one, but Owen steals it. Turner picks up the loose ball. Here come the Riders. They'll go back into Parks, and Parks scores again. And really, there was nothing Garrett Gunter could do about that. He yeah. tried, to, tried to hold his position, but Parks is just too big. Yeah, and Parks knows that he can go up one-on-one -on -one like that. The ball gets kicked out of bounds when we are back to Van Wert. So with 3.14 to go, Van Wert continues to move. And there's a great sign that Nate Phillips comes back into the game. Really happy that young man's not hurt. Yeah, he took a hard fall, too. Boy, that, that floor is not forgiving. Now he's a football player, too, so he's got to be tough. Those Cougars had a great football season this year. There's Phillips oh, come back man. down, and he scores. He scores on the way out, and he scores on the way in. Nate Phillips knocks in the deuce, and he makes it 34-30 on the Loddick scoreboard. Phillips has six on the night. And obviously, Loddick and his, his coaching staff have seen something. You know, they're, they're exploiting that little seam on that one side. There you go, you see it right here. Watch the ball go off of Braden Sullivan, or so it looked like it did. The, the St. Mary's crowd down on the baseline, they were throwing a fit saying it did not go off Sullivan. There you see it. Looked to me like it did. Well, that's just the fourth turnover I've got for St. Mary's. There's a three ball from the left side of the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Parks. And that would have really blew the roof off this place if it would have went down. Here come the Riders. This is Anksman with the ball. He needs to get on track for the Riders. Swings it over. They'll get it back to Owens. Owens looks down to Parks. Parks down low and gets the ball. Little turnaround. He'll dribble the ball straight up and he's fouled. He scores. Austin Parks showing you why he is one of the top players in the state of Ohio. Watch this. He gets the ball. Not afraid to put the ball on the floor, Gar. Watch no, just this. Once. That's all he has to do. But he puts it down so low that you really can't get your hands on it either. What a nice play by Austin Parks. He's got 21 of the 32 right now. So he's doing everything he can right now to help the Riders get to the district finals. And like I said, Van Wert says that's fine. You know, he's going to get those points. And he knocks that in. He's got 22 on the night to lead all scores. It's 34-33 on the Lodix Joel scoreboard. Here come the Cougars trying to hold on to that one-point lead. 2.20 to go. This is Nate Phillips up top. He's guarded by Anksman. He'll pull Anksman as far away from the basket as he can. They'll go back to Back to Carson Smith. Smith is guarded out top by Braden Solomon. Here comes Phillips. He'll dribble drive the baseline and score. He's got a quick step, doesn't oh he? Oh, my goodness. Nate Phillips showing you why he's so explosive. And he makes it 36 33. There's another steal. There's Phillips. Gets it back to Brandon. And he scores. Caden <laughs> Schaefer gets the loose ball. And a great pass by Phillips. And he scores. He makes it 38 33. And the Cougars are rolling. They're playing great defense right now. Here we got a foul out top by Connor Campbell. Connor Campbell fouls number 11, Great Sullivan. Watch the replay here. Yeah, that was a nice move there by the young man for uh, St. Mary's. Just to be able to spin that ball around and to draw that foul. Thanks, man. I'll take it out in front of the. St. Mary's faithful here on the side in front of our booth. Try to they'll go back to Owens out top. Swing it to Anksman. Anksman swings skip pass to Turner. Turner back to Owens. Owens into Parks. Parks get low position. They'll go back out top. Three ball on the way. That's off the mark. There's another three ball. And it's good! Coban Owens knocks in another Lee Kinsel three-pointer. And he makes it 38-36 on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard. Here come the Cougars right back down the floor. And we got a held ball as Coban Owens gets in there and mixes it up, grabs the ball, and they'll go back to the Riders. They're down two with 1.11 to go. Yeah, that was time there. The, the Cougars trying to go to the inside. 
you know, just too many bodies under there for St. Mary's. Here comes Owen with the ball. He's guarded by Gunter. There's a steal out top. Here comes Caden Schaefer. Gets it out top, and they score. Karsten Smith with the running layup. He knocks it in to make it 40-36. We're under a minute to go in the third quarter. That's five points for Carson Smith. Well, you talked about it earlier. Other players scoring, and by golly, they're getting it done now. There's a well, near steal, and they're going to get Luke Wessel. Yeah, right now for some damn work. So far in this game, it's been scoring by committee, and you know they, they've limited everybody else on St. Mary's team from scoring, but they've been able to put several guys in the scoring column. So Van Wert doing a great job of keeping that little bit of a cushion between them and Van Wert. There you saw Brady Sullivan thought about taking it to the rim. They'll go back to Austin Park. Three ball on the top of the key. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Anxman, and Anxman's going to be fouled. That will send Evan Anxman to the line. There you see Anxman right on the spot. Takes the ball up, and he'll go to the least finish recipe free throw line. Yeah, Anxman one for two in the first half so for his only point of the game so far. First shot on the way. It's off the mark. 32 seconds to go. Danny Homer, Dar Neverdahl from Liberty Benton High School. Division three, region six, district semifinal. Game one, St. Mary's and Van Wert. And we got a dandy in game two with Defiance and Shawnee. Second one on the way, and it's good. He makes it 40-37. Entering the game now for St. Mary's is Jaden Lotz. And uh, they'll let Evan Anksman take a breather here to start the, at the end of the third quarter. I'll tell you what, Danny, every time it looks like St. Mary's going to make a little run, maybe tie this game up, take the lead. Van Wert comes up with a basket somehow yeah, yeah. and just keeps that little bit of a margin. A near, near steal there, a kick ball. Here comes a good, there's a dribble drive. They'll get the ball to the middle of the floor. And there you saw Carson Smith. We talked about him a few minutes ago. He knocks it in again, and he makes it 42-37. We're at 10 seconds to play. Riders bring the ball down. Three ball from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Aiden Pratt will corral it with five seconds to go. They'll bring it down the floor. Half court shot. It goes off the mark. So after three quarters of play from Liberty Benton High School, the Van Wert Cougars continue to lead the St. Mary's Rough Riders 42 to 37. We'll have fourth quarter action right here on WSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So we start the fourth quarter, partner. The Cougars continue that lead at 42-37. They didn't shy away from attacking the basket. No, they didn't. And they found, like we said, in that third quarter, they found a little seam coming around that one side. You know, and That's I don't good know. coaching right there. That's saw something excellent that, coaching yeah. right there because, you know, they obviously saw something in the first half. They wanted to exploit it. You know, the Van Wert's really playing their hearts out out there. And so is Van, and St. Mary's as well. But It's a very clean you know, played game right it now. It is. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Turnover-wise, Van Wert just four turnovers. You know, six turnovers I got unofficially for St. Mary's. You know, both of them well underneath, you know, what they normally have for a game average. So it's been a very clean game. Not that many fouls either. You know, good pace of the game, too. Stick around after the game. We'll have our Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out our Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. We've got a few players in mind, partner. How about you? Yep, I do. <laughs> this is what the outcome of this I was just going like. to say, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see the outcome first because it's in doubt right now. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, this place filled up real oh, fast. Did it you know, not? <laughs> my lands, there's a lot of red and blue in it here. Is a, it's an American flag in here. <laughs> <laughs> Second game we'll have is just as many, too, because these clubs travel well. So. Yes, they do. Here come the Riders. This is Owens with the ball. He'll swing it over to Sullivan. Sullivan guarded out top. They'll swing it back around. They'll go back into Parks on the low post. Parks kicks it out to Turner. Sullivan on the left side. They'll go back to the right side. Cobain Owens gets it into Parks. Parks got a little farther down, and there you see Austin Parks. He just adjusted after the first pass, Dar, and he goes back down farther. Yeah, and the nice thing is if you're going to throw that 
pass into him. You know you've got confidence he's going to grab it. There's another Lee Kinzel three-point attempt. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to St. Mary's. They're down 42-39. They hurry down the floor. This is Anksman. Gets it out top to Owens. Owens will swing it back into Parks. Parks gets right position. He scores and he's fouled. Yeah. Austin Parks, the 6'11 man child, knocks in another shot. He makes it 42 41. And Dar, he's got a chance to tie this game up. Yeah, there's no way you can stop that I mean, I, without fouling him. You know, in this case here, you had fouling too. He's got 26 right now to lead all scores. And if he knocks this Lee's famous recipe free throw in, he's going to tie this game up with 6.54 to go. And yeah, you this, said it, Parker. You said get him the ball. Get him the ball. Well, they have to. They, you know, they haven't been able to. Well, Anksman's not having the game he, he wants to have. Turner's been locked out of it pretty much. Here's what he's doing that I'm very impressed with, Dar. He catches the ball at the high post. He'll kick it out, and then he readjusts to go down forward. Yeah, and when he does put the ball on the floor, he does it down low. Because exactly. you're not going to pull it away from him. Here come the Cougars. We're all knotted at 42 on the Lottox scoreboard. Here goes Phillips, dribble drive. He'll kick it back out. And they can say Nate Phillips with a charge. And Phillips has been doing it all night. He's been getting to the rim. But that time they say he got a little bit too careless. And the foul goes against Nate Phillips. Well, he was concentrating on the pass out, you know, out in the wing. And man, he took his eye off of the defender. So Van Wert's going to try to settle this crowd down with a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching District Action on WOSN. <laughs> Welcome back to Liberty Bend High School. We're with 6.35 remaining in this one. We're all nodded at 42, and St. Mary's is riding the heavy shoulders of Austin Parks. He's got 27 on the night. Yeah, we're looking at Rocky 2 here, I think. <laughs> you know, first, okay. first game was 62-60. I think this one's going to end up about the same way to where they're going. You know, both teams with an idea of what they want to do at this point. You know, St. Mary's knows. Feed the big guy, feed the big guy. I, you know, I, let him take it in there. I don't know who's Rocky and who's Apollo. We're about yeah, to I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> so here come the Rough Riders. They get the ball down. And Cobain Owens, he goes to the basket. He'll kick it back out to Solomon. Solomon gets it over to Parks. Parks is guarded by Aiden Pratt. They'll go back to Owens, and that's where they'll reset the offense. This is Anksman, goes back down to Parks. Parks on the low post, guarded by Pratt. He oh, finds out. Turner with the cut, and he scores. Oh my goodness, Jace Turner picks a great time to get on the scoreboard, and he makes it 44-42. That's the first lead, the second half for the Riders. And we've got a foul on the floor. And let's see, what, here's the replay here. They're gonna call a charge. They're gonna get Garrett Gunter on the call. Wow. So the ball goes back to St. Mary's, so everything going right away right now with 5.57 to go. And I'll tell you, Danny, that's when Parks is the most dangerous. When you've got to pull two, three guys onto him because he's scoring so much that you leave Jace Turner open on, well, on the outside. Look, credit Austin Parks finding the open man. He's doing oh, yeah. it. Look at him calling for the ball. He's feeling it right now. He wants to help this squad. They'll go back to Parks down low post. He kicks it back out. They'll dribble drive. They go back to Solomon out top. And he'll, Solomon's just telling his teammates, let's settle down, fellas. We've got the lead. They'll go back to Turner on the right side. Back to Solomon. There's Anksman cutting towards the foul line. Owens gets a screen from Park out top. Owens tried to turn the corner. Great job by Nate Phillips. They'll go back to Parks. Down low post. Owens on the perimeter. Gets it back down to Parks. Parks to Justin. Nice spin. Oh! oh! You gotta be kidding me! Oh my goodness, Dunkaroo, how do you do? Austin Parks, 46-42 on the Lottox scoreboard. What a move, too. Look, <laughs> we're on the St. Mary's side, and you can hear it over here. He's got these guys fired up over here. But Parker, what a move. You and I jumped up out of the booth when we saw that. Wow. That's a big time move. That's a big boy move. Oh my goodness, 4.42 to go. Riders lead 46-42, and there you see Aiden Pratt. Aiden Pratt's not gonna take a back seat to anybody, and he makes it 46-44 on the Loudoch scoreboard. That's Pratt's first basket of the second half. He wanted to dunk that one too, Parker. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and there we get 
get a carry. They carry the ball. Watch this, partner. Watch the footwork down low. This is unbelievable on the step back towards the basket. He'll go left, back, right. That's, that is athleticism yep, right there. that is. That'll do Ohio State well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you think Coach Holtman's looking at that going, yeah, we need him now. Yeah, we'll, we'll take him right now. <laughs> I'll take anybody right now, partner. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. That's true. So here come the Cougars down 46-44, and we've got an absolute shootout. Aiden Pratt guarded by Parks out top. They'll swing it back to A.J. Prophet. They'll go back to Gunter. Three ball from the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's gathered by Anksman. Anksman gets it out to Solomon. And that was another Lee Kinzel three-point attempt. Lee Kinzel is our three-point sponsor. Now it just rolled around the rim, fell off. Turner guarded out top. He'll swing it to Angsman. So Van Wert needs to stop right here in the basket to quiet this side over here. Solomon gets the ball, and you saw Angsman on the other side completely left alone. But they didn't get him the ball. And they are content with holding the ball with 3.27 to go. And St. Mary's is going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout on the boot. We're watching Boys District Action on WOSN. Back here at Liberty Benton High School with 3.25 to go in this one. St. Mary's Rough Riders have a 46-44 lead. And partner, send oxygen. <laughs> I'm about to ah. run out of breath here. This is unbelievable. Back and forth all night long. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Van Wert's got it. You know, that thunderous block, uh, dunk by, yeah. by uh, Austin Parks underneath there. But you got to keep in mind, that's just two points. Absolutely. You know, you've got a lot of ball left to play. you got to keep your head in the game. You know, this Van Wert team knows he's going to do that kind of stuff. So you just uh, stay with him. And Parks goes baseline there, and he's going to be fouled by Garrett Gunter. And you know, Aiden Pratt's got to be thinking, I've got to keep myself adjusted here to not let him get baseline. That's exactly what he did. But unfortunately, they're going to foul him if they do that. Yeah, because the second guy coming up and helping out is the guy that's going to really have to do the to defend him because he's going to go around Pratt, you know, and, he, and Pratt's relying on those guys coming up and backing him up, and they're the ones that are going to have to do the fouling. So Austin Parks will go to our Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. That shot goes off the mark. Here comes Aiden Pratt. And it's 46-44. We're at 311. Parks guarding Pratt almost fouls him. The uh, Van Wert faithful wanted a foul on that one, but they didn't get a call there. So Van Wert spreads the offense out. They try to get their athletes here in space, trying to get Parks away from the basket. Yeah, that's the amazing thing, too, is Parks hasn't fouled that much tonight. No, he has not. There's a dribble drive by... Carson Smith, that Pratt thought about taking, he'll go to the foul line. Carson Smith will go back to Pratt. Pratt, little spin move, go back outside. Three ball on the way from the top of the key, and it's good! A.J. Prophet knocks in another Lee Kinsel three-pointer! That's it. the third one tonight for that young man. Makes it 46-44. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School, where, partner, I was wrong on the scoreboard. It's 47-46. The Cougars are taking the lead back. It's a big three-point. <laughs> it is. And that, there's a young man there shooting 41% from three-point range. You can't leave him open out there because he likes to step back about two feet away from that three-point line and fire it up there. And if you leave him open, he's going to bury it. And there you see Owens getting hounded by Nate Phillips. Jace Turner comes up to help out. They'll go back down to Parks, down on the low post. Parks looks to get the ball out. Jace Turner from the top of the key, and it's good! Jace Turner knocks it another Lee Kinzel three-point play! And he makes it 49-47 on the Maddox Jewelry scoreboard. Jace Turner with a big-time shot. Here comes Pratt, dribble drive, kicks it back out. Thought about taking the three. They'll go back out top. This is Caden Schaefer, swing it back to Pratt. Pratt dribble drive left side, takes it up. A lot of contact, and he scores! Oh no! They're saying that was a charge. Watch the replay here. And you saw Pratt get to the rim very easy, and the contact was made. 
Oh, I think that's a good call, partner. Yep, I really it is. do. I think he was set. I think he was set. The officials are talking. Did he get the shot off? This is a huge call right here. Hey, watch this. Let's see if we can see. Did the shot go before the? Oh no! no I don't, not at all. I don't think so at all. Let's see what the officials say. They're talking about it. Right. St. Mary's coaches are way out on the floor. Austin Parks just told his head coach to go back to the bench. Let's see what they call it. This is a big, big call. They're going to send both teams to the benches so they can discuss this. I mean, the implications right now are huge. Absolutely, if this basket counts. But take a look at this. I'm not real sure. It's a charge in my, in my world. I mean, what do you think? I think he was set. I yeah. think, you know. But the call was made that it was a charge. I don't know what they're discussing now other than does the basket count is all I can think of. I know one side of the gym's gonna be happy. <laughs> one side's gonna be kinda upset here. Yeah, kinda. So here they go, they're coming out of their huddle. Let's see what they decide. Well, at least they got together and talked about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, you know. absolutely. Hey, look, these officials have done a great right. job tonight. They really have, we said it earlier, it's been a clean game. Let's see what they say. They're bringing both head coaches together. They're talking to them at the scorer's table. We're gonna be able to tell the reaction of one of the head coaches. See what happens here. Yeah. I'd like to be down in that huddle. No kidding. They say. I'd be sitting at that scores table where I can overhear this. Tate Mayberry trying to explain it to Dan Hagemeyer. At least they're smiling at each other. <laughs> Let's see what they say. It'd be great if we could get word up here to the booth, but I don't think that's going to happen. But now they're at the scores table discussing it with them. Well, 147 to go right now. They've got St. Mary's with the lead at 49-47. See how this plays out. That's what's on the board right now, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to wait and see if they take that off or what they're going to call here. Like you said, Danny, one side of this, this arena is going to erupt. <laughs> <laughs> so Tate Mayberry, the official, is giving the instructions there. They're calling them out to the floor, but we haven't got any clarification right now. And they're going to say the bucket counts. They just put it on the board. The bucket counts. Wow. The bucket counts at 49 all. A huge call in this play. And St. Mary's gets the ball back. So remember that play, Dar, as we go on to the end of this game. St. Mary's will bring the ball in. They'll get it to Austin Parks. Go back to Owens, and Owens is being absolutely hounded by Nate Phillips. 1.37 to go. Oh, not at 49. Jay wow, Stern. what a game. It's an into Parks. Parks, nice backdoor cut by Angsman, and he scores! Evan Angsman scores the bucket! He makes it 51-49, and there you saw what a play by Parks, finding the open man, and Angsman knocks it in. Man, we're going to take, a, gonna take a time out. So with 119 to go, partner, we're going to keep it right here. So you're down two. What, what, what are you telling your kids in the huddle? Well, basically, you know, keep playing what you're doing. I mean, just keep trying to get to the basket if you can. I like you know, that. Yep. The other thing, you know, if you go to the basket, keep in mind you've got one of the best three-point shooters out there, you know, that, and profit. And if he's open out there, he can, he can gun it in from out there. So, you know. Don't get away from what you've been doing. I mean, it's work, you know. Sure. Just keep trying to drive it on there. You know you got parks underneath there, but, you know, it's going to stop you any way you can. But you just got to play your game. St. Mary's on that hand, stop them from getting in those lanes. And, and, you know, they've been able to stop that one play that, you know, Bamble was doing very well on. They've been able to take that away from them, but you got to just clog up the lanes, but stay out there and be aware of your three-point shooters. Van Wert will take the ball out in front of the St. Mary's faithful. This is Garrett Gunter with the ball. Cougars down 51-49. We're down to 110 in the game. Danny Holbert, Darn Neverdahl from Liberty Benton High School. Game one 
of the Division Three Region Six District Semifinals. There's a three there ball from the right corner. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Parks. Parks gets it out to Owens. Owens finds Turner, cutting down the middle. Turner wisely holds it up, and a nice job by Turner to wait for his teammates. We're under a minute, and there's a foul out top as Nate Phillips will go and foul Solomon out top. 51-49, Riders lead, 48 seconds to go. Cobain Owens will go to the least famous recipe free throw line. And Cobain's a 64% you know, free throw shooter. So. Again, this is a 71% free throw shooting team. And he misses that one. Wow. So still a one possession game. Second one just about ready to go. Owens dribbles twice, shot goes up, and he makes that one to make it a three-point game. So it's a single possession game here for the Cougars. We're down to 45 seconds. Here comes Garrett Gunter, dribble drive with a left hand, and a great job of getting her in. He scores to make it 52-51. We're at 35 seconds. St. Mary's win bounds the ball. They'll go back to Owens. Owens is guarded and fouled by A.J. Prophet. So obviously they want to make Owens go to the line and beat him. He missed one of two in the, in the earlier action here. Yeah, he hasn't been the foul line that often. I mean, he's, he was 18 for 28 coming in before those two shots right there. So he hasn't been there that many times this season. You know, put him at the line. Still, if he, can, if he hits both of them, you know, he's still one possession game. So here comes Cobain Owens. 31 seconds to go. Shot goes up. And he knocks it in. And he gives the Riders the 53-51 lead with 31 seconds to go. So a big free throw right here. He takes a deep breath. He dribbles three times. Shot goes up. And he knocks it in. That's huge. That is really huge. So we're going to take our last time out here this afternoon with 31 seconds to go. 54-51. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back here at Liberty Benton High School, Dar, with 31 seconds to go, 54-51. You don't necessarily need the three ball right away, do you? No, you don't. And I don't think St. Mary's is really worried about the two right now. You know, you saw it on the last play that he went to the basket pretty easily. St. Mary's knows that they're going to have to foul him if they score, you know. So that last free throw was one of, probably the biggest one of the night. Yeah, we you talked know, about that. Three point, to make it a three-point game. So, yeah, you know. They, they're not real worried about them getting the two. They just don't want them to get the three. So here come the Cougars down 54-51. 31.3 seconds to go. Garrett Gunter will inbounds to Nate Phillips, and there's no pressure from the Riders. They'll stay back behind the half court line, and Phillips is just going to let that ball come out, and I don't blame him. Save that time. So here come the Cougars. Gets the ball to Garrett Gunter. Gunter swings it over to Carson Smith. Carson Smith guarded by Turner. Pratt up top. Down to 20 seconds. Cougars down three. Nate Phillips cutting to the basket. There's a dribble drive. They'll swing it back out. Three ball on the way. It's up. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Pratt. Pratt goes up, and he scores. There's a timeout on the floor. Aiden Pratt scores the deuce to make it 54-53 with 4.4 seconds to go. And I think, I think uh, Dar, here's the replay, watch Aiden Pratt. Yeah, he's trying to draw the foul. He was, you're absolutely right. And a great job by Austin Parks of not falling for that. Kind of just holds his hands up and doesn't go into his body. No, he went straight up. Great job by Parks on that one. And I think the Cougars are wanting to know how much time is on the clock. They thought they called the timeout, and then they did. They put more time on the clock. They went from 4.4 seconds to five seconds. So a good job of officiating there by Tate Mayberry as he goes over and clarifies that. Well, I'm not a coach, so <laughs> I'm not going to draw up this play because I have no <laughs> idea what, you know, well, coach and staff for Van Wurst going to have to come up with to try to stop these guys. 
You know, obviously St. Mary's going to try to get the ball into Parks. You know, throw it up high, let Parks grab it, hold on to it. They're going to have to foul him. Then. I don't know if you've noticed this, but the kids from Shawnee are in this corner. The kids from Defiance are in the other corner, and they got smiles on their face watching this game. They're really enjoying it, just like this packed house. Is. Oh yeah. <laughs> What a great game. Oh, my goodness. We couldn't have got a better first game. So, obviously, Van Wert, if they don't get a steal here, they're going to have to foul immediately. Yeah, like I said, if I'm if I'm St. Mary, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Parks up there, throw it into him, let him elevate, grab the pass, and force them to foul him. He's a 70, you know, percent free throw shooter for one thing. They're going to put two people on Owens. He's the lone rider down low. Now Nate Phillips will go back towards the ball. Solomon can't get the ball in, throws it up to Parks, and Parks is going to be fouled immediately, and he comes down hard. And there you see Aiden Pratt trying to help him up. Nothing dirty about that at all. No, he absolutely just, not. <laughs> and Aiden Pratt showed great sportsmanship there. But thanks for making me look like a genius. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not, but thank you. Really. You're right. So Austin Parks will go to the line for his biggest free throws of the year, Dar. If he can knock both of these in, he makes it a three-point game with 4.2 seconds to go. you got to believe that if he misses the second one, they'll get the timeout possibly. First one on the way, and he misses Ooh. that one. So Van Wert with a chance here. With four seconds, you can get the ball down the floor relatively easy. And you can better believe St. Mary's going to be out there contest anything that you try to come across that line. So here goes the shot. Up 54-53, Austin Parks has 29, tries to make him even 30, and he does. And Van Wert's not going to take a timeout. They'll bring it to Phillips. Phillips brings it down the floor. He'll get across half court. Shot goes up from the corner, and it's good! Oh, oh my! my. You got to oh be me! And they counted it! They counted it! They counted it! The Cougars win! Unbelievable! The Cougars win! <laughs> oh, great job. And here's the guy out there all night long. Oh, that young man has been goodness. throwing him in. Number three, A.J. Prophet with the shot of the year for the Cougars. And look, Dar, say what you want. What an improbable ending as A.J. Prophet. And the sad part is Austin Park's career comes to an end for the St. Mary's Riders. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm speechless. Wow. Well, AJ Prophet <laughs> averaging four points a game coming into this game. It's four three pointers tonight, none any bigger than this one. And right the pass here. from Phillips was right on line. Jace Turner tries to get there and he just knocks it down. Un Look, I'm going to call it right now. I'm going AJ Prophet. Uh, maybe that, that, who else? <laughs> you know, oh my God. Nobody else can. Holds the candle to that shot right there. Goodness. <laughs> so the Van Wert Cougars win this one 56 55. When we come back, we'll have our Stolly Hustle player of the game. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back here at Liberty Benton High School with AJ Prophet. You got a fan club back here. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> what were you thinking when the ball came to you in the corner? Oh, uh, you know, we were just trying to advance it, get a call timeout, but obviously that didn't happen. He threw me there in the corner. I kind of was fading away, and I kind of, I don't know, I just shot it, and obviously it went in. When you started the na today's game, did you think you would be taking the last shot? Oh, absolutely not, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I've been, I've been pretty good from three lately, but I didn't think I was going to be taking the last shot. Well, you guys are on a roll right now. You go to the district finals. Are you excited about that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, congratulations, Thank young you. man. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School, and I'm still catching my breath, Dar, yeah. as A.J. Prophet knocks in for Van Wert, the shot of the year. The three ball goes in. They win the game with one-tenth of a second as the clock expires. You can't ask for a better ending. No, you can't, and, you know, that just goes to show how important free throws are at the end because, you know, Parks hitting one of two gave Van Wert that opportunity with four, just over four seconds left, and they took advantage of it. Like I said, profit coming in, averaging just 4.4 .4 points a game. Here it is. You see it here on the replay. <laughs> 
four three-pointers tonight for that young man. None bigger than that one right there, and there was nothing but net. Think I mean, you think he'll be a prom king maybe this year? Uh, I think he'll be. I think he'll be prom king. I think he'll be a lot of things. Maybe, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, you can check out our Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube, and that award goes to AJ Prophet with that game-winning shot. So uh, a great night of basketball here, and we're not done yet, partner. We got another one to go. But uh, your final thoughts on this game? Well, I think Van Wert came in with the right game plan. I mean, they knew exactly what they needed to do. That was to control, you know, everybody else but Parks. They knew that they can't, you know, they couldn't match up with Parks. He's six foot eleven. You know, he's a big body out there. He's, you know, got all the moves, everything to go. He got his thirty points, but that's thirty points out of fifty-five points on your offense. I don't even have twenty-five points out there for the rest of the team. You know. They, they were able to shut down Anxman. They were able to shut down Turner for most of the game. The other two big guys for uh, St. Mary. So Van Wert did exactly what they needed to do to win this game. Now, they came down to the end of it, you know, where they they really needed, they needed a three-pointer to win it. But, you know, when you look at the whole thing overall, I think Van Wert had a, a good game plan tonight. St. Mary's, unfortunately, just didn't get enough points on the board, you know, and – Give St. Mary's a lot of credit, though. Man, what a team. And, and, yeah, and you take a you look. Know, uh, and, and, and the same thing with, you know, their, their coaching staff and everything. This great season for St. Mary's is, you know. So that'll do it from Liberty Benton High School. Thank you to our director, Ken Ricker, Darn Evergall, our cameraman Jacob O'Neill, and Scott Garlock from Liberty Benton High School. I'm Danny Holbrook for our whole WSN crew. God bless, and we'll see you down the tournament trail.